Hey there, how's it going everyone? It's a Thursday night preview for NFL Algorithm Week 5. We're going to talk a little bit about this game. And uh, then for people that have subscribed to purchase the NFL Algorithm October subscription, you can uh, see an unlisted video that's going to go over all the games as they are standing right now. But we're going to talk about injuries and why some things change and, and programming with this file so that you can mess around with it and do other simulations other than just what you see that is sent to you. So here's the game for Thursday night. We've got Seattle and we've got the Rams. And it's predicting a tie score in this game. Um, now, th th what's interesting about this game is uh, Seattle, you know, with Russell Wilson, always a solid team. Their defense isn't as good as it had been in previous years. But the Rams now have Matt Stafford and, and just an urge to score some points. You can see the LA teams have been playing well. The Chargers played really well last night. The Rams did not beat Arizona this week, but they're going to come back and they have offense. So it's predicting a, a close game and a reasonably a reasonably high scoring game. The problem is the over under is set at 52 or 53 or 54 or something. It, it's way up there and it's it's predicting kind of this, which is a 24, or 24, or 27, 27 game or something, and then somebody wins in overtime. So it's really too tough to call. Uh, in terms of a good pick in this game, well, you get Seattle at plus 120. So if you have to take one of these teams on the money line, it's it's Seattle. Their win score is really negative. So if you looked at just the season stats and what this formula does, it really thinks the Rams have a much better chance just empirically to win this game. It actually thinks the line should be much more in favor of the Rams, although Seattle is at home, which helps Seattle. But according to the algorithm's point projections, which are a much better guide um, pretty much always, you know, especially at this point in the season, but it's just a much better guide in general because the point projections are taking into account everybody who's playing. And there are a few injuries... Uh, questionable people that may or may not be playing, and there's some big names. It's Daryl Henderson, a running back on the Rams. Uh, it's Tyler Higby, a the tight end, ankle, we got ribs. Then you got DK Mc Metcalf, always complaining about foots or quads or something. He, he you know, is questionable. And uh, Estridge, a wide receiver, I guess. So this kind of hurts the scoring, especially DK Metcalf, which could be a really impactful player, and Daryl Henderson, good running back, um, both contributing. So if you're gonna, um, you know, if you're if you're if you're gonna bet the over under, you're, you're asking. For, there's a ton of question marks about injuries, and you know, I would say that with these players that are are questionable, well. Are they going to be playing at 100% anyway, even if they're in the game? And, I mean, Josh Jacobs was questionable all day yesterday for uh, the Raiders. He did play. He played pretty well. But, you know, you still you have to wonder about that. So, back to the game. Um, what do you do here? I, I don't know. You try to take a reverse line of Seattle plus 7, which will be like minus two, 250 probably or 200. Uh, that, that's probably what you want. Um, because you, you think this game is going to be decided by overtime or one score. So if you get anybody plus seven, you're probably going to win. That would be my pick of the day, even though it's not an even money pick. Um, now, the in terms of point projections and stuff, you can up the magnifier by changing this number and refreshing to get a higher scoring game to see where it can go. But there's another way to mess around with this as well, which is in the Pro Reference tab, Pro Ref. There, there's a rating that, that helps adjust scores, and it's related to the defensive rating. And we had this number really, really high at like 100 last week. And you'll see when you have this number really, really high and the defensive ratings are, are accurate and close within a range, then you get some distorted things with scoring. Uh, although I guess that brings it right into 24-24. <laughs> That's funny. Um, uh, well, in general, you want this number to be a little bit lower. Um, now that we're getting further on in the season, essentially, because this range isn't as big. So this is another thing that you can toggle, and uh, it actually doesn't change the score there, but sometimes it will because it's what it's going to do is it's going to change um, this this percentage here, I believe, right? If we make this thing 150, yeah, you can see stuff changes. Yeah, it does change. Um, but uh, it, it just helps to streamline the range of scores because if you look at what happened in week four, uh, a lot of our projected scores were okay, but a lot of them were off, and weird things happened in some weird games. I mean, a lot of it was pretty good, I have to say. You know, we, we really missed this Vikings game. This was a disaster. Um, I, I, I don't know, other than the Vikings had put up 30 points at home against Seattle in their only other home game, but they did not do anything other than a touchdown in the first quarter against the Browns. I, uh, unbelievable. But Indianapolis wins. 
The Bengals won Thursday night. The Saints game sad. They, they blew an 11-point lead, I think, in the fourth quarter. Bills crush it. Arizona wins as an underdog. Seattle wins as an underdog. The Raiders lose last night. That was not good. The Chargers defense looked pretty good. Um, so you can see that the the Raiders underscore here and the Chargers overscore. So th that's a that's a big miss for the algorithm. Um, I guess the Chargers are getting some more you know home games at SoFi State Stadium. Maybe they're a good home team at SoFi Stadium. They always took took flack for being a bad team at home. Uh, Bears beat the Lions. Ravens beat the Broncos handily. Which is interesting that the point projection said that even though the win strength didn't. That's why I always say the point projections are a better guide. That's why we sort this des descending by projected margin of victory so that we try to get the teams that win on top. I mean, 10-6 and six is not all that bad. I, I, I don't like what happened with this Minnesota game because that's a clean miss, and I don't like losing this Raiders game, but we can chalk that up to the, this being really early in the season. And <laughs> the Jets blow this. The Jets beat Tennessee. Tennessee does not even tie it with a field goal uh, in overtime. That's so sad. Um, this game was lower scoring until then. I like what the algorithm did here. It showed it was a lot closer game than the line thought. Uh, and then Chiefs just run over Philadelphia. Green Bay, you know does more than it said here uh, against the Steelers. Washington wins in a similar type close game with higher scoring points and the Patriots just miss a field goal to make this 20-19. to How funny would that have been? It predicted 21-20. It could have been 2019 if it had not gone off the side of the, the, the bar. <laughs> and of course the Panthers did not show up. Dallas a pretty good team. Dallas is showing strength. I hope the algorithm reflects that in the upcoming week. And if you'd like to see the video for the upcoming week uh, then you can subscribe. It's $42. $42 for the rest of October. Um, it, it, we're, we're getting into fun time of the season here. So good luck, everyone. May all your picks be winning. And on Thursday night of week five, I would say Seattle plus seven alternate line. That's what I want in a close game. All right, good luck.